this video I'm going to take you through the process to make this your own DIY water deionizer. No more marks when you're washing a car, bike or windows. Right, so in this video I'm going to put together my own water deionizer. So you're probably tuning into this video because uh, you want to do the same. Perhaps it's because you get fed up with all the water marks when you're cleaning your car or your motorbike, or perhaps even your windows. Perhaps you want to go really hardcore and you're going to try and build something like this uh, into your home water system so you can have um, much better quality water. So I'm doing this purely for motorbike and car cleaning and the occasional window cleaning. Um, most of the time when I try and wash off my car and motorbike, especially in the winter months, I'm able to use rainwater um, and that tends to be relatively clear has a low parts per million uh, rating, which we'll talk about in a moment. So when I w wash off the car, it doesn't leave any horrible water marks. Now the weather's getting better again here in the UK, so my water bucket's pretty much empty. And when I water or wash off my car, especially if there's even a little bit of sun, which I'm trying to avoid, it will leave water marks if you can't get round and dry it quick enough. So I've thought for a long time about buying uh, a water deionizer something like the aqua gleam solution um, that tends to say that it can kind of lower your water down to about 30 parts per million um, and they tend to cost about 70 pounds to 110 pounds depending on the size you want but they don't actually give you that many kind of washes it's quite a small unit uh, so you're going to get through and have to keep on paying 70 pounds quite regularly um, depending on how much you kind of wash your car so this it's hopefully going to be a cheaper solution. It's not cheap, cheap. Um, these total parts that we go through in a moment cost me about £150. Pounds. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to refill this unit myself, um, but the actual kit and what solution I'm building here should last me well over a year, um, if not even longer. Um, and I'll keep a track of that over time to see basically how many car clean sessions um, I can get before it has to be refilled. Okay, so I'm not an expert, but from the research I've done, when it comes to kind of what leaves watermarks and what's healthy for you, um, in terms of the watermark piece, anything less than 50 parts per million, um, you probably aren't going to have to see that with the human eye. So if you can filter water down to at least below 50, ideally 30, um, you're not going to notice any watermarks on your car, or motorbike or your window. So that's kind of what we're going to be uh, aiming for. So that parts per million, that is the measurement value that we get when we look at um, water and looking at um, what the total dissolved um, solids are within it. So that's um, where we use this thing here. It's called a TDS meter. We're going to look at uh, a few things uh, in this video. What uh, the water's like out of the tap, what the water is like out of a bottle, you know, bottled water that you buy from a supermarket, um, what um, the water's like from out of uh, a bucket from rainwater or the water butt, and then finally obviously what the filtration uh, water is like that we make out of this kind of DIY setup here. So again, what we're focusing on, what we're trying to get to, at least for the car cleaning and bike cleaning stuff, is anything below 50. It's going to be great. If you're looking at this from um, a drinking perspective, it's considered anything over 500 isn't good for you. So below that, um, it's going to be fine. Typically. Um, areas that have very hard water they're going to have somewhere between kind of 400 to 500 um, parts per million where I live it's kind of very hard so the water is going to be up in those uh, 400 somewhere um, actually over 60 percent of the UK has hard or very hard water uh, but the general kind of recommended tap water range does, re does range from somewhere between 200 to 400 parts per million um, Typically, something um, that you buy from bottled water is going to be somewhere between 40 to 80 parts per million. Uh, rainwater somewhere between kind of 8 to 13 parts per million. So a good variance uh, of qualities of water. So that's what we're going to try and recreate here. Something that is less than 50 parts per million so that we can't see the water particles uh, on our clean car. If you look to buy, uh, I guess, a solution like this, from a detailing company to someone that specializes in car cleaning and whatnot. Um, the product you might be familiar with is something called AquaGlean. 
they look to filter the water down to 30 parts per million and they have um, a 12 inch and a 30 inch um, deionizer module or canister uh, that's going to cost you somewhere between 70 to 110 pounds and based on how hard your water is uh, is going to define on obviously how much filtration has to happen and how many washes you're going to get out of it but it's not many washes um, really and that's really why I decided to go my own route so instead of having to spend 110 pounds kind of maybe once every quarter depending on how much you're getting your washing cars um, motorbikes and windows with a solution like this and I'm going to go into the parts that we have here um, we should have a solution that hopefully is going to last us over a year um, well the kind of stuff should last us forever but the contents of this should give us one maybe two years uh, worth of cleaning this bags enough for multiple uh, fields of this so maybe we've got kind of three or four years worth um, of cleaning that we get out of this but we'll follow up that obviously in future videos seeing how long this lasts because I haven't done this before myself. So this total solution that we're looking at here that I put together it's going to cost you somewhere between £130 to £150 so still not cheap uh, but in the scheme of things when we compare it um, to a solution that you might get from a detailing uh, cleaning company um, it is going to save us uh, quite a bit of money and hopefully give us even better results. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we can get less than 30 parts per million filtration out of this module to start with so that's going to give us a lot of usage so it gets up to near 50 when we're going to want to have to kind of clear this out. So let me talk to you about the bits that we've got, why I've got them and how things are going to fit together. Okay so to start off with I have some hose pipe, I've got about three meters worth of hose pipe that I've cut from my hose that I'm going to use basically as a connect from the one end um, of this canister to either my pressure washer or just a general hose that I can hose over the car. We then have just an empty coke bottle. I'm going to use this to kind of turn into a shovel which will help me get um, the resin from the bag uh, into the vessel. This vessel here is an 11 litre vessel. I've gone for that because pretty much uh, the best value for money seems to be a 25 litre bag of resin which means I can get two and a bit refills of resin in this. Obviously you can get a smaller one or a larger one and uh, it's going to last you longer or shorter based on obviously how much resin you can have in there. Inside we have a filter mechanism so this will obviously bury itself down into the resin and on the end of here we have uh, a one-way uh, filtration system so water needs to go in this way and out the other. There is a, an arrow for in and out on the end here not sure how well you can see that on the video. But we have in and out options there. This resin will go uh, into here, filling up to just below the brim line here. Then I put a little bit of water in, which enables us to be able to bury this down uh, into the unit. And then I've gone for this Unger resin. So I think you can get resin slightly cheaper than this and these bag prices seem to vary um, over the year. Right now we're doing this during COVID-19 and like everything the prices seem to have gone up. So this bag actually cost me uh, just under £90 which actually is what makes this bill a little bit more expensive. Um, but the Unger resin does seem to be good quality um, resin, one of the best. So that's why I thought I would um, go with that to try it. Obviously because I'm using this for, uh, with a garden hose I've gone for... Um, hose lock ends so the system comes um, with these connectors that we're going to put into the other side of the filtration unit. Got a little bit of uh, plumber's tape so we can seal that in nicely and then hose lock um, end connectors and then just some cheap um, knockoff kind of hose lock connectors like you have on your hose pipe. One is a standard one, one is a stop one to stop the water just coming out the end which will be able to attach to the hose and have one end connected on to either side. And then finally uh, this TDS meter so that we can measure the different types or the different uh, PPM values um, of the water both before it goes into our filtration unit and also most important when it comes out to see if it's actually doing um, the job that we want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some different types of water, water from the tap, uh, some rain water 
and some bottled water just to show you the different um, levels and how this TDS meter measures the parts per million uh, values of the different types of water. Okay, so just been and got a bit of tap water that I've put into this little bowl here and we're going to now get the TDS meter. So again, I live in a very hard water area so I'm expecting this to be up in the high 400 marks, hopefully not above uh, 500. So we can see right now, let's move this closer somehow. There's obviously no uh, reading uh, on the water meter. I'm gonna pop this into the tap water. I can't quite see that from my angle. Okay, so we've got 408. So that's kind of what we're expecting with the tap water. I'm just gonna throw this out and get uh, a bit of the bottled water and see what that measures like. Okay, so I've got just some cheap Asda sparkling water that I've just put in to the bowl. So now we will try that. So again, currently reading zero, Let's put that in. Okay, so it's 133, so a bit higher than I expected to be honest with you, um, but that's um, what the bottle water is like, so obviously uh, much less um, particles in there than the tap water, and finally going to get some rain water and see what that measures like. Okay, so now we've got some rain water, so it's been uh, raining just the last couple of days, and the water butt was empty up to now, so a couple of days old um, water, so again Currently reading zero. Then we have it, uh, a rating of 45. So again, that's a bit higher than I thought uh, we would have for uh, rainwater. But I know that when I'm rinsing my car off with the rainwater, I'm not getting any um, water marks. That makes sense, it's under 50. Um, so again, so if we can get this canister to be anywhere near to there, I'm hoping we're going to get to zero uh, parts per million. It'd be my ultimate goal, um, but we will see. Now we understand a bit better about the different uh, ratings of the water. Now, of course, this may not be 100% accurate, but it's fine for the purposes of this exercise and we've been able to compare the different readings from the different water types. So now let's um, put this stuff together and see if it's going to work or not. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take our bottle and either use some scissors or a knife and cut it into kind of some form of scoop. So we're just going to do that now. Obviously children, ask an adult and don't cut your hands. Okay, so I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but this is basically, yeah, I've cut mine out and hoping that I can use that in a bit of a scoop type fashion. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our vessel. gently. As mentioned there is an arrow along with the writings for in and for out. I'm probably at the end of this gonna mark it with a bit of silver paint that I have so I don't forget what I'm doing. And then basically we have these two connectors that we can need to put into either side but we do want to put a little bit of this plumber's PTFE tape around the end of it so we will do that now and uh, make sure we've got a nice watertight seal for our in uh, and out inlets. Okay, so this doesn't need to be mega neat, just something like that, that you've got a good even covering around the end. Pop that off and then carefully screw this into the end of the vessel filter top. Hand tight should just be perfectly fine, but if you want to do it up with a wrench or whatever, you can. And obviously then we're gonna do the same for the other side. Okay, so obviously because we're using this uh, with a hose and our hose lock connectors, we need to put the right type of connector on the end. If you are using this kind of in a, perhaps a caravan or under sink in your house, obviously you then just need to put the relevant attachments on now um, that, you would, uh, that you would be using to make the connection. So I'm just gonna put a very small amount 
the tape over the end here, even though I think I probably don't need it. Just to help those hose lock connectors get a slightly better seal on the end. Do the same on the other side. Okay, so I've just chopped open my bag of resin, and inside is basically another bag that actually has the resin in, um, so which means you can kind of tie it back in a knot or put um, a cable tie around it or something to keep any moisture out of it um, between uses. This stuff is quite heavy and it is quite cumbersome, so basically, I'm just going to use my scoop to scoop parts of this up um, into. Uh, the vessel and again filling it up roughly um, to around the top here so definitely take this off and do the bag start scooping You see the advantage here is I can put the scoop all the way in to the vessel which hopefully is going to minimise me dropping most of this over my garage floor. And again you can see here just what the resin looks like. It's like a sugary texture. Okay, maybe just a couple more. One thing I think is going to be important to note as well is that all of this is going to be quite firm in here. So I think at times, as the assuming this works, as the the water filtration lessens a little bit, we can kind of roll this around or give it a shake on the floor to kind of agitate and move um, the resin around a little bit, just to kind of get some fresher resin uh, around the, the filter connection, or to maybe just give us a little bit more longevity in here. So I think that's now struggling a little bit to go in. Okay so I think a little, one more scoop, small scoop and I think do. So I'm going to grab um, a cable tie to tie back this bag up and then uh, we'll come back to kind of doing up the top of this vessel and then uh, obviously give it a try. Okay so cable tie is applied and the resin is I say just about up to here so definitely nice and full. So I'm not sure how well this is going to go in um, without adding any water. So we'll just quickly try that now. Just nice and gently pushing it in. Again, this is why it's important we didn't fill it up to the top because the resin will obviously be moving around as we kind of push it down into the vessel. So it's actually going down not too bad. Just keep maneuvering it nicely. As it gets towards the bottom is obviously when it's going to get harder because it's going to be more compact uh, down the bottom as we're kind of pushing this in. Okay so I've managed to get this all the way in and get it kind of uh, nicely lined up with the thread. So I found if just moving it kind of forwards and backwards gently this all the way through to get it nicely lined up and into position has worked really well. Last thing for us to do is obviously connect up our pipes. So remember 
especially if you're using a hose and if you're using a, a locking hose lock mechanism like I am, one side uh, you're going to connect is specifically for the in, one side specifically for the out. So again, this doesn't matter right now, but I'll just make our hose up. So this will be the size that I connect into either pressure washer or like hose gun. And then this side, be the one that connects onto the end of the vessel. So we're all connected. So again, this is the end that we are going to use that's going to spray onto the car or the motorbike or the windows or your tap, if that's how you're going to connect it up. So make sure you're looking at the out end and connecting it there not the in end, because that's obviously where the hose pipe connects. So let's grab the hose, grab the uh, the gun, and um, hopefully see if it doesn't leak. And then most importantly, see what is the quality of the water that comes out the other end. Okay, so I've moved the vessel outside just here, and the water is connected up. I've put the uh, hose attachment into soaker mode, so oh, let's probably change it to a different mode. Um, soaker mode, um, so not much of a jet of water comes out, just water. And I put some of that, I just leave it running for a little bit actually, just so that water is definitely coming through our vessel. No leaks, so it's a good start. Let's put some of this water into my little dish. And then here comes the test. What's the water quality going to be like? So. Turn this on. Hopefully you can see that right now. It's on zero. Offering up the water. <laughs> oh wow. It's at zero. Oh my word. That's amazing. Okay, so that's it. I'm blown away <laughs> with the performance. I sprayed some water um, onto my car through the canister to see basically how it dries. I do uh, hopefully insert um, the pictures to show how it's kind of dried or not. I've recently waxed my car so the water droplets are holding uh, in place so it'll probably be tomorrow that I can verify that there's been no water marks. But I'm impressed, zero parts per million from the DIY water tank. Once I finished using it, um, I did uh, turn the hose off and just allowed the, the pressure that's built up in here just to have the water come out of the hose it also means that it's not mega full of water and it's relatively light um, to pick up. It's still heavy, so just keep that in mind. Obviously, when you're kind of moving it around, don't uh, put your back out. I also figured if there's any way I can have a little bit less water um, in there, may help uh, the resin. Obviously, not kind of kind of get used up as water's kind of passing through it. Um, I'm going to do myself probably a little logo to go on the front here, so I know it's deionized water, find somewhere to keep it in the garage. I'm gonna put the date on and try and keep a rough idea of how many kind of washes and uses I get um, from one canister. There's plenty for next time, but yeah, that was it. Hope this is helpful. Please leave comments uh, down below if you've built one of these and it's working for you, if you've done something similar, I'd appreciate um, feedback. And uh, I'll do a follow-up video in the future at some point when this runs out and basically say, of you know how did I get on hopefully uh, over a year uh, of usage I don't wash the car every week anymore because I've got kids and work and stuff to do um, but we'll see how many washes and when this eventually runs out and do a follow-up video so that's it thanks for watching this video a thumbs up would be really appreciated if you're interested in other geek type videos please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks why not also follow us on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.